Today what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to debone a deer in the field. Now this is a little bit different than quartering an animal, which you may have seen done before. Essentially what we're going to do is we're going to go through the process of not breaking any bones and taking this deer and putting it into a game bag so that we can transport it out leaving everything else here. Now this is a legally harvested deer and our game log has already been filled out. We've already telechecked this animal. Now that's important because if you haven't telechecked your deer and you're in an area where you can't get cell phone reception, you're going to need to leave proof of sex on the animal. That's already been done in this case, so we're going to go ahead and demonstrate how to get all the meat out, leave the rest of it here, and transport it out. So what we're going to do here is this deer has been field dressed already. We're going to use a couple of tools here. This is the knife that we use to field dress it. You can see it's got a zipper blade here at the top. I'm going to use another blade. This here is an outdoor edge. It's a razor blade. We're going to wear protective gloves and we've got a game bag. These are like cheesecloth game bags that are very common. All of this deer, which is probably, probably going to break down somewhere in about 30 to 40 pounds of meat, is going to easily fit into one of these bags and be very easy to pack out. So let's get uh, these gloves on and we'll get started. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start here on the back right where the neck hits into the shoulder and I'm going to make an incision all the way down this, this deer, pull this hide back and remove the back straps. And at that point in time, once I pull this hide back, I'll be able to expose not only the front shoulder, but the back hams and I'll come back and start taking off those chunks of meat on both the front and the back. But first thing, make a cut right through here and start pulling this hide back to expose the meat that we're going to be processing today. So start that off. I'm gonna use my little zipper blade here and go right in here at the neck and make this pull right here. Now, once I've got my first incision there, I'm gonna start pulling this hide. Now, if you'll pull this hide, it'll start coming off almost on its own. Take your blade, start making your cuts here and separating the hide from the actual the body of the deer here. Good sharp knife is always good to have I'm doing this. It makes this job much easier. Now I'm pulling this, all of this cape, the hide back this way. And what, the reason I'm doing that is it takes all the hair with it. And it also gives me a spot that if I need to lay something down, one, it's easy to find, two, it's a better way to keep it clean. It's also keeping my meat clean. Now I'm exposing that front shoulder, you can see making some cuts here pulling this hide down I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to take the back straps out <clears throat> now the back straps lay right along the spinal cord from the front shoulder all the way down to the beginning of the back hands so we're literally going from here to about here and that's where they're at the easiest way to get them out is to go right in by the spinal cord, right beside the back hams, close as you can get, and start making your cut, close as you can get to that spinal cord, right up through here like this. So, what I've done here is I've literally went right down the edge of that spine on this one side and exposed this uh, back strap right here. Now, once I get there, I can fill that big old tubular back strap of meat right there. I'm going to come down here right at the right at the back ham right where the this piece of meat runs into the back ham right here i'm going to make a cut there's a couple different ways you can do this you can start here and start working it around till you get to the top of the rib cage or you can find the top of the rib cage which is right here and work it this way but once you start getting it out it's very circular shape you, you you'll be able to get your hand on it and start pulling it out and just kind of make some feathering cuts take it right out. Like I said, there's a, several different ways to do this. Honestly, I uh, usually do this while the deer is hanging. Makes it a little bit easier, but this is how to debone in the field. There we go. Easy as that. That you know, some people will tell you that the inner loins are the best piece in my opinion. Inner loins are really good. There's just a whole lot more of this. 
That's a uh, beautiful piece of meat right there. We're gonna go ahead and bag it up. Now, you can see that piece of meat was removed from right there. Now, there's another one on the other side, but while we've got the deer laid up this way, we're gonna go ahead and start working on the back ham. When I left the back hams a while ago to get the back straps out, I kind of had pulled the hide down to this point. Now I'm gonna pull it all the way down to about the knee, cutting up the backside so that I can remove all the hide from the meat. All right, now once I get to this point right here, the way I like to do this is to separate these out in muscle groups. It's the same way I do it when I process my own meat at home. So if I'm gonna go through the process of doing this, there's two ways to do it. You can take a boning knife in and just run along the bone and pull it off into a big chunk. <clears throat> I don't package it that way, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it the way that I, I would be doing it at home. And that is, you find this seam right here. You can see it's kinda right in the, almost in more in the middle, a little bit toward the front. What you've got is you've got three or four distinct pieces of meat in here. You got this right here, then you've got these two, which I'm gonna take off together. Then you got the back, the back round. So what I do is you'll find this spot, it's very easy to see. When you come through and you make a cut, when you make that cut there, now that I've got that cut, I'll open this up, kind of feeling around where the, the meat there is. All right. All this type of, the seam, the silver seam, I leave some of that on in this process because it will protect the meat from getting any additional dirt, bacteria. You see there, you can't help the flies are gonna lay on it. I'll leave a little bit of this on there and then clean it up at the very last minute. Now, I take this, you see there's another seam right here. I take this one and the next one out together. Now, once you get to this area, there's a bone that comes off right by the tail and it moves like a Y. So you have to be able to trace around that bone and right here, I'll show you, I'll make this cut. It lays right here. See that bone? I'm tracing around that bone. Once I've got that where I can get my fingers in there, I'll put a light pull, make some cuts with the knife and this piece ought to come out pretty easily. This is much easier if you've got another set of hands. Let's get this cleaned up a little bit. Now that is that big muscle group right there. It's actually two different muscles. You can see one and two. This is great for a whole lot of applications. You can grind it, you can use this for Burger, sausage, you can cut steaks out of this. There's a whole lot of different things you can do. Now, it doesn't look very great now, but I'm gonna get this cleaned up when I get home. I wouldn't wash it a whole lot because there could be some bacteria on that, and you could introduce the bacteria onto more areas of the meat. Take it just like this, get home and get a real sharp knife, and you can take this stuff right off, and it'll just leave an absolute beautiful cut of meat. Let's get this bagged. Now, once you get that big piece off, you can see this hip bone right here, plain as day. See that? That's what that is, that's the hip bone. So what we wanna do now, we wanna come in and make a cut and trace right along that leg bone right there. You can feel it, it's very easy to feel and find. See that bone, that femur bone that goes down here? i am just made a cut and I'm just taking this meat right off of that bone. Watch your fingers when you're doing this. All right, there's that big chunk of meat. Came right there. You take that, it's ready to bag. Now, once we get to this area, got another big piece of meat here, big old chunk of meat there, and then it'll be on the, the lower part here, the shank. So you can uh, decide where you wanna go from there. Just kinda taking off the pieces as they present themselves to me. I think right now I'm gonna get this, this back part of this ham here. 
So right here you can see is where my tenderloins ended right here. I'm just getting this chunk of meat right here at the top of the back ham. Right here is the hip bone again. I'm gonna come in around that hip bone, make a cut. Got a big chunk of meat there. It's almost like the continuation of the of the uh, back straps. Oh, very good piece of meat there. So now, you can see this leg is getting pretty pretty thin here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this back ham and this lower shank. And because the shank is the way I've got it laid out here is actually covering a little bit of the back ham, I'm gonna take the lower shank first. So to do that, I'm gonna come right here where it connects, make a cut. Remember, I'm trying not to break any bone and there's actually two pieces of meat down here. We got a tendon here. We're gonna to try to leave that there with the deer. There we go. We got the portion of the shank there. That's the outer portion. We got one more little piece on the inside. Then we're gonna get that back ham out. Again, I grab these pieces of meat and I find where it attaches to the bone. Trace the leg bone right down. We got those out. Bottom is pretty much done. Now we're gonna come up here and we're going to start getting this back ham off. I'm gonna separate it from the femur right here and work this back ham off. And then I'm gonna go on the other side. There's a lot of different ways that people do this. Like we're trying to showcase a way here that we're not breaking any bone. A lot of times you'll see people come in and make a cut and separate this all out. Like I say, we're trying to do this today, breaking no bones. All right, so now I'm just working this knife in and around the pelvis, making the cuts, separating the meat from the hide and the pelvis bone. You can see that is a big, beautiful piece of meat right there. So, right here by this hip, these are the inner loin. So we went in here, made a cut right here, and you can see right here are the inner loins. While we're here, we're gonna go ahead and go ahead and take these out. That's this side inner loin, and we flip the deer over, we'll get the other sides. So we've kind of finished up the back straps, all the back hams, the inner loin, and now we're gonna start working on the front shoulder. Once we get the front shoulder meat out, we'll take some meat from the neck, and essentially the process is half done. It's exactly the same on the other side. So let's go over here now and locate this shoulder. Now a lot of different ways I've seen people do this. What I like to do is locate that shoulder interesting thing about a deer's front shoulder is that really there's no bones attached you can come in and find that front shoulder blade and literally kind of carve around it and it will come completely off separated what we're going to do now is we've got the shoulder almost separated we're going to make a cut along from the where the brown meets the white we're going to make a cut right here and cut up through here to the to the elbow and now once we get there we're going to take it on on up once we get that done we're going to pull the hide back may need a knife to do some of this here we go Now, at this point in time, I've got the hide away. I'm gonna leave it right here on the carcass 
and use this as a workstation. Now I'm gonna to try to separate this out in muscle groups again. You can see, see that bone comes right through here as part of the shoulder blade. I'm gonna make a cut right here. Once I get that in, I'm gonna start peeling that meat right off. What I'm doing here is I'm just, I'm working along that shoulder blade right there. I'm just kind of almost filleting it off there. It's very similar to the back. I'm just trying to separate these out in the biggest muscle groups that I can get. Now this part's gonna take some cleanup. When you get into the kitchen, you got all this connective tissue. I will get this in and clean it up exactly as I want it when I get back in to the kitchen on a table. That is the majority of the meat right there on this front shoulder. Now you see I still have some here and I've got a little bit down here, but that is uh, the big portion of it. So let's get this bagged. So now we've got our shoulder that's separated. We've got the big part on the outside of the shoulder blade. We're gonna come in on this side of the shoulder blade, make another cut up through there. These are really good for grinding for burger or doing uh, jerky or sausage. This is perfect cuts of meat for that. So we had the piece of shoulder meat that was on the back side, a little bit bigger, piece of shoulder meat come off of the front side. We're gonna lay that right there. We've got a little bit down here. We're gonna get that off by locating the bone and making a cut right down there to it. Now these, this particular piece of meat right here is a lot of individual little muscle groups in there. It's kind of stringy. Uh, again, it's good to be ground or you can cut it into, into stuff for jerky. So I'm not gonna sit here and try to separate this out in individual muscle segments in, in the field. All I'm trying to do is to get this piece of meat off so that it can be used, leaving all the bone behind. All right. Essentially our front shoulder is now picked pretty clean. We're, we're done there. So now the last piece of meat that we're gonna get out is gonna be the neck meat. You kinda of see where the, the neck meat lays. It kinda of ends right in this area here. So what we want to do is to go in right inside where we took that uh, piece of meat off of the shoulder. We're going to go in, go right down to the spine here, make that cut. And you can see it's just a big sheet of meat that kind of starts right under the shoulder blade. It works its way up here in and around the neck. There you go. That is the neck meat. Now, it looks like there's some meat here. We're right on top of the spinal column. Very, 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 very little bits of meat there. I'm not gonna take a chance on any of that because remember, we're doing this. We're deboning a deer to try to avoid any contamination with any, any of the bones or the spinal column. So we're gonna leave that right there. We'll bag this up. So essentially, that's exactly half of the process. To recap, we came in, we made a cut along the back, we removed the back straps. We took those out, we came in, we found a seam, made a slice on the back ham, took that out, separated that out in muscle groups. Came down and removed the lower shank, went in, took out the inner loins, then we moved to the front, made a cut there where the shoulder blade is, removed the back part out, came and did the exact same thing on the front, went down and got the lower shank, removed the front leg bone, went in and removed the neck meat. Now, the other side is exactly the same. So that's exactly what you wanna do. When you get done here, you're gonna have all of your meat completely deboned in a bag and ready to go. If you're someone who's used to taking your deer, complete deer out at home and doing this, you know, then you've gotta deal with how you're gonna discard the waste. This is a great way to do that. If you're someone who's used to quartering the meat, you might want to give this a try as well. Once you get this done, you got very little um, bones or nothing, nothing to handle after that. And if you're in an area that's a CWD surveillance zone, to move that deer out of that CWD surveillance zone, this is now required. So give it a try. Make sure you take the right tools and be prepared. It's not that bad.